destroyed. That's how Alec Murdoch's surviving son described the disbarred attorney on the night of the murders of Paul and Maggie Murdoch's youngest son and wife. We're well into week five of Murdoch's murder trial, and today his defense team will be calling more witnesses to take the stand after a handful of witnesses have testified so far, including Murdoch's surviving son, Buster. Our Katie Kamen is live in Colleton County at the courthouse this morning. Katie, we're still expecting more witnesses from the defense to take the stand this week. Good morning, guys. Yes, that's right. So we've heard from four witnesses from the defense so far. We expect them to call that fifth witness first thing this morning, though no word on who that might be yet. Now, the defense says they expect to rest their case by the end of the week. So that means we could hear closing statements as early as Friday or potentially Monday before the jury deliberates. Now, Buster Murdoch, that's Murdoch's surviving son, his oldest son, was the first to take the stand yesterday. He was joined by more family members than we've seen so far, and Murdoch seemed to watch his testimony uh, with pride almost. Now, on the stand, Buster painted a picture of how close and happy the family was, and he described getting the call from his dad about the murders and what happened later that night and in the weeks after. Yeah, his demeanor was, I mean, he was destroyed. He was heartbroken. I walked in the door and saw him and um, gave him a hug and just just broken down. Could he speak? Not really. Is he crying? Yes, sir. Now, next to take the stand was Mike Sutton, a forensic engineer from North Carolina who recreated the crime scene at Moselle. Despite the state challenging his expertise and his arguments on cross-examination, Sutton testified he believed the shooter had to be five foot two to five foot four, which is much shorter than Murdoch. And he told jurors Murdoch would not have been able to hear gunshots fired at the kennels if he were inside the house with the TV on. It puts the shooter or whoever fired the weapon, if they were that tall, it puts them in a, in a uh, an unrealistic shooting position. You would have to be bending over and have your shooting hand down at or below your kneecap. And what's important about that to me is, is that um, it just, just makes it very unlikely that a tall person made that shot. We lost another juror yesterday. The judge says they got sick. That brings us down to two alternate jurors after two previously got COVID and another had a medical emergency. Live in Colleton County, Katie Kamen, Live 5 News. Well, if you are unable to watch our coverage of the Murdoch trial live, don't worry. Our team of digital journalists, we have you covered. They provide you with real time updates each and every day of the trial. And to find and follow that page, go to live5news.com and click on the live blog.